Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the approximate expression for the function q of x. The function q of x basically represents a partial area under the normal distribution curve with mean 0 and variance 1. That is, when you have a normal distribution with mean equal to 0 and variance equal to 1, then, then the function q of x is basically the area represented by the shaded region where this is the point x. So, q of x is clearly is defined as integral x to infinity 1 by square root of 2 pi exponential of minus t square divided by 2 dt. Since this function is the normal PDF with mean 0 and variance 1. So, this is the definition of q of x. Now, we want to derive a approximate expression for this integral, especially for values of x uh, basically, we want to derive an approximate expression for the function q of x for large values of x. So, this integral can be rewritten as 1 by square root of 2 pi integral x to infinity 1 by t multiplied by t times exponential of minus t square divided by 2 dt. Now, recalling the formula for integration by parts, we have integral f of x multiplied by g dash of x, where g dash is the derivative of the function g of x, dx is equal to f of x, the function, the first function, multiplied by the integral of the second function, that is g of x, or the integral of the second part of the integrand, that is g dash of x, which is again g of x, minus integral derivative of the first function, that is f dash x, multiplied by integral of the second part, that is integral of g dash of x, which is g of x dx. By using this formula, we can rewrite this integral. That is, we want to denote f of x as 1 by t and g of x as minus exponential of minus t square by 2. Clearly, the derivative of this function is equal to t times exponential of minus t square by 2 that is integral t times exponential of minus t square by 2 dt is clearly equal to minus exponential of minus t square by 2. So, by using this formula and the integration by parts, we can rewrite the integral as 1 by square root of 2 pi. First term is the function f of x, which is 1 by t. And then it is multiplied by the integral of t times exponential of minus t square by 2, which is minus exponential of minus t square by 2. And the limits are x to infinity. And the second part of the integral is minus integral, the derivative of the first function, that is f of x, which is 1 by t. So, the derivative is minus 1 by t square. And then the integral is minus exponential of minus t square divided by 2 dt. The limits are from x to infinity. Clearly, uh, so when we actually use these limits or insert the values, we have 1 by square root of 2 pi. For infinity, this is clearly equal to 0. For x, we have minus of minus plus 1 by x exponential of minus x square over 2. That is the first term. And the second term becomes integral x to infinity, 1 by t square exponential of minus t square over 2 dt. Now, by repeating the process we used in the first uh, step, that is from here, we have 1 by square root of 2 pi, 1 by x exponential of minus x square over 2 minus and now, f of x becomes 1 by t cube and g of x becomes, or g dash of x becomes t times the exponential of minus t square by 2. That is, we have integral x to infinity 1 by t cube multiplied by t times exponential of minus t square by 2 dt. So, now we can denote 1 by t cube as f of x and t times the exponential function as g dash of x and then you can then we can use the integration by parts so 
we have 1 by square root of 2 pi multiplied by 1. The first term is 1 by x exponential of minus x square over 2. The first term in the integral becomes the first function which is 1 by t cube. And then we have the integral of this function which is minus of exponential of minus t square by 2. And the limits are x to infinity. And the second part is minus integral the derivative of 1 by t cube which is minus 3 by t power 4. And then we have minus exponential of minus t square by 2 dt. And the limits are x to infinity. So, clearly we have 1 by square root of 2 pi. The first term is again the same 1 by x exponential of minus x square over 2. And then when you insert these limits for infinity, this is obviously equal to 0. For x, we have minus 1 by x cube. And since x is the second limit, we have a exponential of minus x square by 2. Since the x is the second limit, the sign does not change. So, we have minus 1 by x cube exponential of minus x square by 2. And next, we have minus integral x to infinity 3 by t power 4 exponential of minus t square by 2 dt. And this minus or minus basically becomes plus. So, the next term is 1 by square root of 2 pi multiplied by 1 by x into exponential of, that is the first term is the same. And the second term is minus 1 by x cube exponential of minus x square by 2. And the third term is, now again we repeat the process in the first step, that is we have f of x equal to 3 by t power 5 and g dash of x is t times exponential function. So, this is plus integral x to infinity 3 by t power 5 multiplied by t times exponential of minus t square by 2 dt. Thus, repeating this process, we can clearly write that the integral becomes 1 by square root of 2 pi multiplied by the exponential function of minus x square over 2 multiplied by the series 1 by x minus 1 by x cube plus 3 by x power 5 minus 3 times 5 by x power 7 plus and so on. So, this is the final series. That is the, in other words, q of x is defined by this infinite geometric series, which can also be written as follows. 1 by square root of 2 pi exponential of minus x square over 2 multiplied by 1 by x plus 1 by square root of 2 pi exponential of minus x square over 2. And then we have summation n equal to 1 to infinity 1 by x power 2n plus 1. That is for n equal to 1, we clearly have x cube multiplied by 2n minus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial multiplied by minus 1 power n divided by 2 power n minus 1. Clearly, for n equal to 1, we have minus 1 by x cube because these two terms are basically 1 and this is also equal to 1 and this is equal to minus 1. So, we have minus 1 here and then for n equal to 1, this is 1 by x cube. So, we have minus 1 by x cube and for second term, for n equal to 2, this becomes 1 by x power 5 and this becomes 4 minus 1, 3 factorial, that is 6 and this one is 1 and this one is 2. So, 6 by 2 is 3 and since this is n equal to 2, this is plus 1. So, that becomes 3 by x power 5 and the uh, rest of the terms follow. But for large values of n, we can basically ignore this infinite series and we can say that the function q of x is approximately equal to 1 by 1 by square root of 2 pi into 1 by x into exponential of minus x square over 2. That is for large values of x. Thanks for watching.